they parade themselves before rich and powerful people to get money apparently for their ideas that the rich agree with, but the moment that they become what they're looking to become, they find that the rich have an agenda for them, that the rich have something to ask of them like the John asks of the prostitute. And that's one of the things that I admire about Mr. Trump because he told them all, I don't want your money. Politicians are all talk, no action. Most of them don't know what they're doing. They just could run. They like, change, you know, like you wind them up and they run for office. They're controlled fully by the lobbyists, by the donors, and by the special interests, fully. And you said recently, quote, when you give, they do whatever the hell you want them to do. You better believe it. So what specifically did they do? If I ask them, if I need them, you know, most of the people on this stage I've given to, just so you understand, a lot of money. So from your experience uh, in all, you know, tracking the media, experiencing demonization campaigns, it's a big deal to have Louis Farrakhan come out and say, you know, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan come out and say, hey, uh, we should look at Trump. Can you flesh that out and elaborate? Because undoubtedly, uh, they're going to try to you know, take that and then twist it. Well, I said recently that um, if the American people voted for Trump, he could take them into the abyss of hell. He's free, he's rich, he hates political correctness, and rightly so, but he said some things that I would hope that he would get around him persons who could help him, because as a businessman, par excellence, he has people around him to help him do business. But if he says, let's go in to Iraq and take the oil, that puts him in the class of those neoconservatives who had a project for a new American century. And they wrote to Bill Clinton and Trent Lott and they talked about attacking Iraq and taking out Saddam Hussein, not just because he may be in their eyes a dictator and was once on the payroll of the CIA in the war against uh, Iran and Ayatollah Khomeini, but he had become a thorn in their sides and they wanted to get rid of him. He kind of become a Trump. He was doing his own thing. Yes. That was his crime. And that is the crime of those who refuse to come under the control of the IMF or the World Bank. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. Our government has gone into nations with money from our Congress to stimulate the dissatisfied and then arm them against a government that is their government. That's what America did in Libya. That's what they're doing in Syria. And the blowback now is they have created a refugee crisis that is destabilizing the countries in Europe. So when Mr. Uh, Trump said, um, we can't uh, allow these Muslims refugees into America. Now, a lot of people were upset with him, but I know, um, sir, that the hatred for America in the Muslim world is building, as we told Mr. Bush, no Muslim leader 
could call for jihad and have it stick. No Muslim leader had the power to unite the whole Muslim world. I said, but America's policies will unite those people against the West, and it is happening. So in this way, Mr. Trump, I think, is wise to vet anyone coming from that area into America because the hatred for America is in the streets now. So if those people are refugees and America feels I got to let 10,000 of them in because America created the problem. Now, if you let them in and you don't vet them carefully, you might be letting in your own destruction. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations, a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. No matter how hard the schemers plan to destroy the good that can come to the people with proper governance. They are losing and they will lose because they have set a trap, but they're getting caught in their own trap. The American people are waking up. The masses all over the earth are beginning to rise. And that's why Zbigniew Brzezinski said, namely in earlier times, it was easier to control a million people, literally. It was easier to control a million people than physically to kill a million people. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. So all kinds of schemes are developing to kill mass populations. And you may have heard uh, us say that um, the gentleman that was the uh, Secretary of State under Nixon, Mr. Kissinger developed this memo called Memo 200, in which he said that two billion people on this earth had to be culled because the resources of the earth are getting shorter, the population getting more, so we got to kill billions of people. And it's going on as we speak. The radical, uh, um, you call them the pharmaceutical companies, who goes against them? Nobody. Who goes against the gun lobby? Nobody. They don't have the power to change it. It's not that the American people shouldn't have guns. That's what the Constitution declares. We as Muslims, our leader told us no weapons, not even as much as a pen knife because in our homes, the nation of Islam has taught hundreds of thousands of people. And in the nation, you never hear Muslim killing Muslim in an argument because we are taught that it's the truth that settles all arguments. So we don't have a gun to reach for or a knife to reach for, we reach for our intelligence and we argue over the truth. What is the truth? And if the truth is from my wife and it condemns an action of mine, I have to bow down to the truth. I can't raise my fist and strike her because it's against our law.
I agree with you that free speech and liberation trumps violence. The problem is when an outside group comes who isn't going to listen to what you're having to say, then you have a right to defend yourself, but, but, but separately because that's one of my main questions and I've got to get to it with you. Sure. And then you just started getting into it before I even asked it. And this is an amazing interview because you're just following where I was going to go without me even asking the question, so it's amazing. But eugenics, yes, 1,100 people get shot by the police every year and killed. In some cases, some cases, in fact, in a lot of cases, uh, it's in the wrong. Sometimes bad officers get away with it. I've written books on the subject. I've criticized it. I'm the guy that you know, tried to expose the police state. But the police are only one small part of the police state. And for me, it becomes a scapegoat. We just make it about them and then project what bad officers do on other officers. And then I look separately at how they used hatred of police in Ukraine, George Soros did, to just now overthrow that government, not to empower the people, it was an elected government, but to create an even bigger crisis. So I see, I see more than a million black people aborted every year uh, on average. In some states, more than half the abortions are wonderful, beautiful black babies. And I don't hear a word about this from the liberal black leaders, the white black leaders, or any of them. I know you speak about it. And so I kind of measure, you got a million dead black people over here, chopped up babies. We know they're innocent. You can even watch some of the sonogram videos where they're fighting the scalpel with their hands and their feet. I don't care what color the baby is, they fight for their lives because they're red blooded. And then over here, I've got 1,100 dead people Maybe a thousand of them are black. Let's say all thousand of them were murdered in cold blood. The system's telling me to get upset about that all day and make that my main focus. When over here, I've got a million dead black people and millions of dead white people and millions of dead other human beings. I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world. Delinquents, prisoners, all sorts of things just mock when they're born. And then I read Margaret Sanger going, we're gonna pose as liberals. We're gonna go into these black communities, we're gonna buy off their preachers, we're gonna get control of them, and we're gonna get them in these big cities. And I look at the big liberal cities where they've taken the guns from the black people, where they've shipped the drugs in, where they've got the Planned Parenthood on every corner. And I tell you, growing up around conservatives, libertarians, I never heard racist talk in Dallas, Texas. When I started hearing the racist talk was when I would get around liberals and Democrats and people when I was in college and when I was getting politically involved, I'd have white liberals and black liberals come up to me and they say nobody wants these trashy black scum and if you want them, you take them. Why are you so worried about a psycho? And ultimately your sympathies do not lie with black people. They lie with your racist white middle class agenda and that's where it will always lie and you will be destroyed holding that line. Okay, I, I adopted two children. Oh, good for you, white savior. You're, aren't you so proud? You're They're white, not white. white. He's, he's exactly, not white. he's so not white. Exactly, he's you're a white, white savior. You think that it is the white man's duty to fix everybody's problems, right? How because many you, did adopt you adopt. How many? How many did I adopt? I kill my kids. How many? How many did I adopt? I kill my kids. I kill my kids. Babies, I pay for that. You know something? I pay all I'm, my money for that. I get free wicked. abortions you on demand wicked. without apology. You are wicked as hell. Yep. And I'm going to hell. Yeah, I still pay to kill babies though. Really? Oh yeah. How do you get your abortions paid for? I pay for them. I thought really? you said How many free. Did you pay for? Them? Uh, upwards of fifty. Really? Oh yeah. Wow, you must make I a lot of I raise money, money from the community for it. Oh, you don't use yep. your money? You, you multiply your efforts, huh? And I'm going to tell you right now, that's where I've heard the racism. That's where I've heard the sneakiness. And if you want to know where the white devils are, Mr. Louis Farrakhan, I can tell you right now they run the Democratic Party 100%. And they've got black people in their web murdering your people. And they love it. And they think that people don't see them. Well, I see them and I know who they are. And I don't care what color a baby is. My soul won't allow me to hate somebody because of what color they are. Because I know I'll be destroyed if I ever go that direction. And so that's where I stand. That's why I wanted to have this meeting with you because you already tell people a lot of great things. And I know you meet, reach tens of millions, but if you, of which you've already done, magnified, exposing what's in the vaccines, they've caught them in Africa and India with the sterilants, you know that. If you exposed the abortion, which I know you do, and said, you know what? Somebody kills you and gets away with it. They need to be dealt with, I agree. Well, what about what's going on?